Welcome to 7.2 homologous series of hydrocarbons. What the heck is a homologous series? Homologous series is a group of related compounds in which each member differs from the one before it by one carbon unit. And there's different types of homologous series. As we saw in the last uh, homework video, that some carbons, they're saturated, or some hydrocarbons, they're saturated, have all single bonds. Those are called alkanes, so that's one homologous series. If there's one or more double bonds, those are called alkenes, it's another homologous series. And if there's one or more triple bonds, those are called alkynes. And we don't have to have these memorized because they are on table Q of your reference table. And each one has a general formula that we'll get into a little bit later. All right, now, to, when we name uh, things in our homologous series, we're going to once again be dealing with prefixes, but this time specifically organic prefixes, which are given to you in table P. So one of them is hexane. Now the fact that it's ane tells us there's all single bonds. The fact that it's hex tells us that there are six carbons. So we would have one, two, three, four, five, six carbons. Each one can have four bonds, so this will give us our number of hydrogens. I'm going to save time and not draw them in now, but I'll just count. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. So C6, H14. And like we saw on the previous slide, this general formula, right, there's six carbons, and 2 times 6 is 12 plus 2 is 14. So that was that C and H 2 and plus 2. Pentene. Well, pent means there's 5. Ene means there's at least one double bond. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 carbons, but at least one of them is a double bond. And then for now, later on, we'll get into exactly where the double bond goes. For now, don't worry about it. And each carbon can have a total of four bonds, so one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, three, four, one, two, three, four. So now you have C5H, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. CNH2N was a formula from the previous page. Propine. Prop means there's three carbons. One, two, three. And the ine means there's at least one triple bond. Each carbon can have four bonds, so this one has three, so it gets one hydrogen. One, two, three, four. This carbon is full, it has all four bonds. This has only one. One, two, three. So we have a total of one, two, three, four hydrogen. So C three H four. C3H8. Well, if we're going to give this a name, prop, because there's three carbons, and ane, because it follows the 2n plus 2. C4H8. Four carbons, so it's a but, B U T, and it follows the CN H2N, so it's butene. There's going to be a double bond in there. And finally, C6H10, 6, so it's going to be hex. It follows the CNH2N minus 2, so it's going to be hexine, meaning there's at least one triple bond in there. And these carbons, we can see there's different chain lengths, right? When we have all these carbons bonded together, we call that a chain. So chain length becomes important. As chain length increases, gets longer, boiling point increases. 
But why does boiling point increase? Well, there must be stronger intermolecular forces. They become less flammable. Remember, flammable, kind of like a flame, so less burnable. More viscous. Right? The word is viscous. I mean, it's something that's thicker, doesn't flow as easily. A thicker oil is said to be more viscous than a thinner oil or water. And they are less volatile. That means they don't evaporate as easily. Something that's more volatile evaporates more. Something that's less volatile evaporates less. All right, question time. Very, very simple questions. Should be no problem. If you have trouble, go back and watch the video again. See you guys in school.